the universe is much more open, much freer. It is in fact a conscious universe. Trust that our experience of what is good and what is beautiful and what is true is not illusory and that it all has its source in one great reality behind all things. See your own littleness not as being an unimportant littleness but a littleness which is part of the whole. It came into being from nothing some 15 billion years ago. That doesn't in any way prove that God created it, but the Christian belief that God created the universe out of nothing fits very well with the scientific view that the universe came into being out of nothing. Christians and humanists have quite a lot of common ground and it shouldn't be impossible, in fact it isn't historically impossible to be a Christian humanist. So I think Christianity is certainly, whether it's true or false, it's reasonable. If you don't believe in a God, you have no reason to think that the universe is reasonable or that you can understand it at all. I mean, it just might be one haphazard thing after another with no sense or meaning behind it at all. We learn as we go along that there are no absolute infallible authorities. Christian faith is based on relationship to Jesus as the expression of God, that's true. But if you can't fit Jesus into your worldview, why should he be important? He's a Palestinian Jew, 33 years old, what's important about that? You've got to have a worldview that makes sense of it. And the fact is, that is a fact, our worldview has changed completely. And therefore, in every generation, we may discover something new. We may discover something that we thought was right and it turns out to be wrong. And we can be creative. Christians need to know what the new worldview is. It's not the old one that they had in biblical days. So how can our faith fit? Can our faith fit that? I think what modern science does is give you the tools to construct that worldview. The Holy Spirit can reveal something of God through the modern world, the world around us, the influences that we take in day by day. Life is wonderfully miraculous. The human body and mind are wonderfully miraculous. It's not a bad hypothesis that there was an intelligent mind which set the laws of nature so that this universe would be produced. I mean, it looks pretty convincing that. You don't have to believe it. You can avoid it. You can say, no, it's just mathematics. Where the mathematics is supposed to exist, I do not know. The Christian belief that there is a mind behind the universe fits very well with the belief that the world has been finely tuned for the emergence of life and mind. The force of gravity, for example, the force of the charge on an electron, uh, these have to be exactly what they are, not just approximately, but exactly what they are, in order to produce a universe which will produce carbon-based intelligent life forms like us. And the only reason that we think of out there as being dead matter is because of the scientific revolution which came from Galileo. He argued that there were in fact primary and secondary qualities in the world. Primary qualities were all those things which we could measure. Secondary qualities were sensations. When people say there's no evidence for God, what they're meaning is there are no experiments we can do which prove that God exists. We can't get a test tube and find that God is in there. It's not a primary quality universe if you look at how people report it. I am one of the fortunate people who has what you might call for this sort of experience. What is of lasting value to us, surely, is the experiences that we have the depths that we touch. Ask the question, what evidence is there that the philosophy of materialism is true? I mean, materialism, there's no God, there's nothing but matter. You can't put that in a test tube either. The evidence is all the reasons from your experience which lead you to think it. There is evidence for God, but it's personal experience of a transcendent depth to all human experience. Allow yourself to be immersed in this huge, immense, unfathomable sea. You can get that in music, you can get it in art, you can get it in morality, you can get it in science. That, that sense of something just beyond our reach really, but morally good, morally attractive, and experienced as a presence. The ultimate uh, objective of being human, as it's presented to us socially and culturally, is to be a free, autonomous consumer. Someone who 
creates him or herself from the sum total of lifestyle choices and purchases that you make. I think there's a very bad definition of a miracle and I only mention it because everybody else mentions it and that's from David Hume and he says a miracle is breaking a law of nature by the will of a supernatural being. Uh, that's a terrible definition. A much more sensible definition of a miracle, it is an event which is not wholly explainable in terms of the known laws of nature and which shows something about the presence and the nature and the purpose of God. It's got a spiritual significance. Some are clearly stories to emphasize a point. Peter sinking beneath the waves. Well, it was Peter who denied Jesus in the garden. He was the one who was sinking beneath all the trouble that was overwhelming them at that time. Jesus somehow in courage and trust could walk those waters. The many healing miracles of Jesus confront us with a rather more difficult problem and how does healing come about? I would be prepared to say that people felt a sense of being healed or made whole.